Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 239. I'm your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com, and we're honored to have with us the highly regarded and acclaimed authors of Uncertain Fruit, Rebecca and Sally Ann Majoya. Thank Woo-hoo! you. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Glad to be it's good. here. Good. So I got to say, so we, we connected through Rootstock Publishing and you were able, you published a book that came out uh, this pre, this past September in September, mm-hmm. 2022. And one of the things that you talked about in this book is that it is a book that you tell a story. It's a dual memoir, which I'm really, I'm really mm-hmm. I'm excited to talk about how that went, but it's about a story that people don't really talk about much. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um yeah. Sally Ann and I have been together now for 21 years. Mm-hmm. Woo! Mm-hmm. And a few years into being together, we decided to get married and decided to grow our family. And we had um, a long struggle with infertility mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. had uh, tried different ways toward adoption as well and had a what they call either a reclaim or a failed adoption. So Mm -hmm. you have the baby for a certain amount of time and then the baby's reclaimed. But throughout all of that is also, it's our love story. Mm -hmm. So So we provide context um, around the thread of a story that is about the adoption reclaim or the adoption loss, which takes place in a small town in Vermont. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And now I'm, and so, as, as you mentioned in some of your previous interviews and in other places, you're talking about the, you were, you wanted to kind of tell this story as, as part of a, uh, it's that you want to write this for others that might be going mm-hmm. the same thing, but you also kind of wrote it for yourselves. Um, mm-hmm. So how did that process go with, you know, you know, as it was happening and when, and where you stood, what was that conversation that the two of you had together to say, let's write this down? Cause you're both have a background in writing as well correct correct yes in fact i think um on our first date we talked about our interest in being writers actually (laughs) yeah (laughs) um and what avid readers we are we're both incredibly avid readers and Mm -hmm. um, love to write Mm -hmm. and i think um after we lost the baby which was very much like a death for us Mm -hmm. um we ran away from home and we were fortunate enough to have the liberty to do that um, and work from home long before it became popular. <laughs> and, um, and during that process, we were living in a 24 foot RV and we were looking for other resources out there that told something similar to our story and mm. we couldn't find anything. All we could find all these adoption books with books about infertility mm-hmm. and they always like mm-hmm. right. all of them just had this mm-hmm. tied up with a bow ending yeah no matter what right. the struggle was the, the right things, the things they went through it's like they always and it yeah. was just it was it's hard when you're in a space where you've been at, in this for almost 10 years mm-hmm. right and the happy ending isn't happening yes and i'm starting to feel like i'm going to age out mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> So I wanted people to know, and as we talk to people, we realize it's not, we're not the only we're ones. We're not alone in this, that certainly. Through this. Yeah. Um, so. And we really started writing initially for our own healing because mm-hmm. that's just what we did. Um, right. We've journaled to process things even before mm-hmm. the infertility thing. It's just something we right. both do a lot to process what we're thinking and feeling and whatever. But it was really powerful during this healing journey because, you know, we were able to be together twenty four seven, which not everyone can do. When no, you're grieving or want something. to, or want to, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> in your relationship, but mm-hmm. it was really powerful and mm-hmm. wonderful for us in the long run because mm-hmm. we got to be together. And often, um, you wake up in the night. Yeah, you, know, you wake up when you're, especially when you're stressed about something and you just can't go back to sleep. And there's something you're ruminating about. You know, you're angry or you're whatever. Um, so mm-hmm. often we would write in the night. Yeah. I used to say that, uh, the muse tended to call me around two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you have to listen to the muse. We go like, damn new muse. <laughs> Let me go to sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then we wake up in the morning and it'd be like, mm-hmm. did you write last night? Cause I hope I didn't wake you up. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and we would read to each other. Right. What we had, had, and it, 
it's a great way to know like in a grief process where the other person is at because it isn't we all know these stages of grief now but they're not linear Mm -mm. so sometimes I'm ready to yeah I'd like to just go throw things Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) shatter glass or something would feel really good Mm -hmm. the same day that Sally and might be in a whole different space right right and conversely there are times when you know one of us is in our own little shell Mm-hmm. And it might have helped pull the other person out a little bit too. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I think initially when we first started writing, we did have this idea of like, okay, we're going to, um, we're going to have some kind of a, a grief book or something to help other people. Or even an article. Yeah. Like something. I'm yeah. not sure we knew what it was, but we loved mm-hmm. writing. So we thought some sort of, mm-hmm. that's our art creative process is mm-hmm. writing and so we're going to do something with our grief to help other people yeah in some form mm-hmm. um, and so and how did that how did that book kind of evolve and change over time because as you're talking about taking some journaling pieces to it and how did you and how did that process go to turn it into like something that would be conceivably published well right. this is where i say sally Ann is the the magician the, the <laughs> true uh, gifted, like they, we have over a thousand pages that we wrote in that wow. uh, first year. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. We have lots and lots of pages. <laughs> and as we've talked about before, um, you know, one grief touches upon another. So you're writing about things that you didn't even realize you were grieving from 20 years before. Um, when you were seven <laughs> you know, or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, cause I was 27 it when this just, happens. Not. <laughs> it just touches, you know, all yeah. of these different. Um, yeah. Things. So I feel like that was a big piece of it was mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And, and so, when, and so I guess, how because this as i say the, the very unique aspect of this book is a dual memoir mm-hmm. so because you're talking about some of your your you know your your emotions and and like the the, the very intimate journey the two of you went through how did you have how did you take off the the narrator hat and the author hat how did you switch those back and forth and how did you have to do this as as you say, as an editor piece to say, I need to cut this out. I need to add this to it while making sure that you're being true to each other's voices. Yeah, Barney, that's a great question. And it took years for we that to happen. Th- and we had three versions. Yes. The first wow, version okay. was what, mm-hmm. like 300 pages? That, it was much longer. It was almost 400, almost I think. And we had a lot of, we kind of initially had more of a chronological piece, I yeah. think, which, mm. um, and we had some readers along the way. We had some friends and people we trusted to who could read it and give us you know really um helpful feedback or little editing here and there one of the first version Mm -hmm. one of the pieces of feedback we got was we want to hear more about your your just your story Mm -hmm. your love story beyond the baby stuff Mm -hmm. and i think that was helpful that was very helpful giving the the context that we ended up creating once Mm -hmm. we got to where to the final piece but i mean that took years years uh there was one point where and i had a lot of post-it notes up on the wall for different you know titles of pieces that we thought you know oh this is going to go here and i was moving the post-it notes all over the place (laughs) um and there were pieces that made sense that we wrote um about something that we ended up you know combining with another piece because Mm, they were very mm -hmm. different times that we wrote them but they ended up fitting very well together for a you know a chapter yeah so yeah and then pieces Mm -hmm. that were missing there were a few few pieces that as we were writing it well maybe we really need to have more about Mm -hmm. this you know Mm -hmm. um and so we would fill in the gaps fill in gaps yeah here and there and i think that that was a tricky piece because uh, I, we had friends, you know, who certainly were like, "Wow, you have very different voices." Mm-hmm. So really, tri- like, similar but different enough that, like, we how do we pull this together so that it it's readable for the <laughs> and um, but still maintains our voice. voice and the integrity of our individual experience in the story. So. And I think our our experiences were different enough that we wanted very much to have both voices there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
-hmm. I have two um, children that I gave birth to mm -hmm. from a previous marriage that we raised together in a way. Mm -hmm. Sally and I met them when they were six and eight years old. So um, mm -hmm. I, it was it was different in that sense. I had given birth to a baby, but there were other places that were really um, emotionally intense for me and I had a hysterectomy. So I couldn't help yeah. her. I couldn't mm -hmm. do anything. So there's that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it sort too. of, yeah, amplified the experience mm -hmm. of the uh, of infertility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and, and how did that go, like, when you're when you're putting that together? The, at what point, because you mentioned before, and you also mentioned in a previous interview that you did have a friend who was a line editor that kind of mm -hmm. helped you clean some stuff up through. Mm -hmm. at, how did that transition go from kind of keeping it close to the vest only sharing with friends to then was that a big step to say, all right, this is someone I have no idea who this person is and they're going to read it and, 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 and work on that too. How was that step going to sharing it with friends to now bring it down into strangers to, to look at the book? I think once we got to that point and we felt pretty confident with where mm. it was, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Um, so I, I, it was nerve wracking every nerve -wracking. time we handed it over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, it's your baby, right? But, we, also, but we knew mm -hmm. Cheryl Rafay Adams. Who yeah. The, the line editor. The line editor. Mm -hmm. We knew her. We'd worked with her on the campaign for, um, gay marriage in the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. She was, a. Uh, um, mm -hmm. she was just a very advocate. pivotal advocate. Yes. So. so we, at least she wasn't a complete stranger. Even mm -hmm. the line editor wasn't a complete stranger. Mm -hmm. So we cheated a little bit there. Yeah. If you will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but she was so thorough. It was wonderful. To yeah. So thorough and go through every single line and be like, mm -hmm. yeah, cause we changed everybody's names except ours. Yes. In okay. the book. And mm -hmm. so, you know, she caught a couple of places where, and we had played with different names for people. Mm -hmm. So she'd be like, oh, you know what? You accidentally, I think you mean, you know, whatever okay. Sarah here. And you said, Julia, can mm -hmm. you check this? And it's like, oh my God, we did. You know, like we screwed that up. <laughs> she but was a phenomenal uh, editor for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I feel like all the people that edited in various ways, the ones that we knew better than others, um, gave, you know, really useful feedback yeah. that um i think we're, it was always really important to listen to it and and consider it and see what we could do to to uh, absorb it at least yeah and we do jump back mm -hmm. um you know the thread is about the getting and lose losing that baby but mm -hmm. we jump back to our um even our own childhoods mm -hmm. in some areas and so i think it was cheryl someone suggested putting the date of in each chapter like at mm. least the year, um, which I think was very, is very helpful to readers. I think it was kind of the way that we we had already or had we, we, already, done we had already done that, but they kind of the way they organized it a little bit oh. differently for yeah. us. So shifted a few, things. shifted that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you mentioned before it was you had like a thousand pages or so. What mm -hmm. was? How did you decide what was going to stay and what was going to go? And do you have any regrets of taking some parts out of the story that you wish you left in? Right. Oh. It was really a painful process in a lot of ways. I think the editing, um, I know Rebecca gives me a lot of credit for that, but it was very difficult um, because there were sections. In fact, there was a, a beautiful piece that um, Rebecca wrote, which I really would have loved to keep into it. But I think we kept coming back to what's our story. It was mm -hmm. constantly, it was a constant act of mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. refocusing. What is the, the thread here? What's our story? Mm -hmm. And does this really fit into this story? Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, or this may be beautiful as a standalone article. It may be great um, within, the, you know, a thread of a whole different story. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, at the moth. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a very but... moving and meaningful piece. Yeah. Um, maybe you can talk more about that. But, um, yeah. Well, the piece that one of the pieces we cut, well, I mm -hmm. had out, um, I had a third pregnancy, um, and I lost in a previous it, relationship, in, a pre in my previous relationship, mm -hmm. um, and lost the baby. I had a miscarriage, and it was very complicated for me. I was raised very right wing, fundamental, um, born again, and of course, um, pro life. 
And so when I went through this experience of being pregnant and not wanting to be pregnant the third time, but then losing the baby, it was very complicated for me. And I realized, you know, when I pictured people getting abortions, it wasn't a mother of two who thought she was about to get divorced. Like that was not my stereotypical person lining up outside the abortion clinic. And so it made me really rethink all of that. And of course, it was just a few months before our book was published that Roe v. Wade was overturned. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I wish it was still in there. But even though it's pertinent to life currently, it really would not have fit in the book because it wasn't mm -hmm. about that. It wasn't about abortion. It wasn't about, you know. It wasn't about, it was about something that took place previously, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it wasn't. Um we wanted it to stay more to our story. Yes. Too. Yes. It kind yeah. of threw, went back to, a to an old relationship, relationship and... which we didn't do right throughout the book. We stayed. Yeah. I think the relationship we discuss is with each other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It was, it, I think it, it's a constant um, as was our, you know, years of infertility, the continually checking in, che mm -hmm. you know, is, is this what you want to be? Is this what you want to continue to do? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was a lot like that too, in the editing process. Is this where we want to be? And do we think that this mm -hmm. should stay in here or shouldn't or what? You know? Does it feel too personal? Too, yeah. And also we were thinking about our readers too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were plenty of pieces that we wrote about that we also were like, we want to keep the reader reading the book. We don't want them to be like, this is so depressing. <laughs> we don't have to jump off a bridge or something. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the coolest feedback we've got is people say they cry and then a chapter later they're laughing and mm -hmm. that makes us very happy. Right. I mean, so because you, as we said earlier, you both have written before. So what, how did your writing evolve during this process, writing a dual memoir? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. yeah. I think I've leaned toward um, way back, gosh, 30 years ago, I wrote some things for children's magazines and things like that. So it was very different in high school and college. I wrote a lot of poetry. Um, so over the years, I've just evolved a lot mm -hmm. anyway, in, in different ways. I've written more articles and things like that. Yeah, I don't think the I feel like my writing has evolved over time. I mean, I wanted to write children's stories. Anyway, I don't think my first idea of getting published was to be writing a memoir, let alone a dual memoir. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. So I feel like um, I think that I learned a lot about myself mm -hmm. through this process, all of it, of course, mm -hmm. but especially the the memoir piece and um, and not just myself, but a lot about Rebecca as well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we did become better at communicating overall. Definitely. As a result of mm -hmm. the, the writing that we have done. We created a very safe bubble mm -hmm. in the, the, because both of us, it feels it really felt a lot like a death, which feels very much like the rugs pulled out from under you, like the whole world looks scary and shaky. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and at this point, when we lost the baby, we've been trying to have a baby for well, almost 10 years. So right? like mm -hmm. three, 75% of our relationship together. Right. <laughs> we've yeah, been trying right. to, yeah. and I was really terrified that Sally Ann might even just say, I can't even look at you anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't right. be here because- right. So the whole relationship felt very unstable and scary. Mm -hmm. And, but then spending this time together and writing and talking about what we were feeling mm -hmm. and what we were afraid of. And right. it, mm -hmm. it made it a safe place to write exactly what we were feeling without holding back. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was really important that we stuck to the, the honesty um, and that rawness that, you know, a lot of people have mentioned they, they can feel, they can feel the rawness in our voices too, mm -hmm. in our story. But um, I think it opened up, it allowed us to be a little bit more mm -hmm. um, open and raw with each other too. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and, and is it a, is it a way too, because you're able to kind of go through the experience together, you've you're creating something 
creating something as well from that that symbolic perspective is mm -hmm. is important would you do another dual memoir again yes oh in a heartbeat actually, actually. really okay Absolutely. yeah right. i mean especially if i'm writing it with rebecca so so what kind of advice would you give partners uh, lots of therapy. <laughs> lots of therapy. No, which we did that too. We did a lot of therapy. Rally, <laughs> that so. did help. Yeah. Um, that we we actually had that yeah. as a as a, a foundation for our relationship. Yeah. Um, and I I think definitely uh, it's really important to be willing to hold that space for the other person, mm -hmm. and um, allow them to express whatever it is that they need to express on paper or you know, however <laughs> they're writing it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a, I write everything by hand first. So of course I think on paper. Um, and, and you may not be comfortable with they, what they have written about, especially if you're writing a memoir that is, you know, as personal as this can be, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, it's really important to give them that space mm -hmm. and allow them to not just be who they are, not just jump on their words and be like, oh, I think you should have done this. Mm -hmm. Or, but um, to That's... give them the emotional space to go where they mm -hmm. need to go. And um, it might take them to places that you're not comfortable with, but that's a really important piece, I think. Because mm -hmm. it gives it honesty. It gives yeah. it that honesty. Uh -huh. um, but also I think to we wrote on our own mm -hmm. and then put it together going back and forth from our voices. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine, like I could never write like literally together, like sit together and try to <laughs> like that would for me would never work. I mean, maybe that would work for other people, but I would say that would be one thing I'd say is like write your each your own stuff and then come together and look at it and, and don't be, I guess you can't take it personally. Like if, if something doesn't fit in the book, because you have to have a thread. Mm. I mean, there's your life is, you know, how many minutes in in, the, in a, a year? You know, you can't write it all. You can't, and nobody wants to read it all. It has to connect and be a thread. And just right. because something might feel powerful to you, if it doesn't connect to the story, it's not going to help it. It's mm. not going to move right. it forward. And so you can't take it personally. You got to think will it get to my audience mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. will it connect with them if I leave this in or take it out? Yeah. It's a, it's a definite balancing act um, as writing it as a mm -hmm. partnership. Yeah. You yeah. know, because you also want to make sure that you're um, reflecting both of the voices and that you're giving enough space and time in the book um, to, mm -hmm. to hold those two voices there too. So um, I think it is really important for both partners um, writing it to, you know, obviously everybody has their own processes. Some people might want to outline it together initially. Right. And then, but I think that um, I, that's the biggest piece is just that allowing the other, uh, both people to have their own voice and mm -hmm. then, um, and to also be able to be objective enough to stand away from it and um, mm -hmm. allow it to be what it needs to be on its own. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, honestly, too, as you mentioned before, is like you never you you never see a book about adoption that has a ha you know like all of them have a happy ending. Mm -hmm. But I, I would argue this one has a as an ending that is that that that, that reaffirms like that the commit commitment and love that you have for each other. So there mm -hmm. is yes, I mean there is a there is a pretty positive in in a way I would argue there's a there's a really strong ending to that as well. Mm -hmm. so. Very well put. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the traditional. Adoption, right. <laughs> but you're right. I, I feel like I, you know, yeah, I, I won the lottery every day because I get to wake up next to Sally. No, yeah, yeah. Ex ex unless she's up at two o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> 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 no. Then I'll just wake you up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's so funny because she writes everything longhand. Yeah. And yeah. I type everything on a laptop. Mm -hmm. And so that's it's funny too. Our processes are completely yeah. different. Process is different. Yes. Mm -hmm. and I think we initially 
the, we initially actually started the process by reaching out to agents. I think that's mm -hmm. where we started. Mm -hmm. And we had some um, really wonderful agents who got back to us. Um, but many of them said, you need to have a, a bigger platform, bigger social media platform. You know, this is a, this is a moving memoir, but we're not going to be able to support you this way unless you have 10,000 followers. I think it was, yeah, 10,000. Mm, or you we won't yeah. even... Um, yeah, we and likewise, I think we looked into a few different, well, I mean, we certainly looked into different presses and mm -hmm. we're also mm -hmm. kind of balancing the, again, there's balance, um, trying to figure out whether we wanted something that would, where we had no voice in how yeah. it ultimately looked or, you know, where it went. Mm -hmm. And, um, if we could be with a publisher who had a little bit more, um, allowed us to have a little bit more of our own authenticity mm -hmm. within the process. And we were really fortunate with Rootstock um, that they, not just that they were willing to take us on in our book, but that um, they allowed us to be independent enough that we could have some choice in the process of, you know, the cover art mm -hmm. and the size of the print and the mm -hmm. size of the book and the, mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're really great to work with. You mm -hmm. felt like you had a lot of say mm -hmm. and yet mm -hmm. lots of guidance yeah. because you've never done Fantastic this before. Support. It's a great Especially balance. for, yeah, the yeah. first time memoir publication. So, and when we mentioned, you know, we have a friend who's a, an artist started mm -hmm. as an artist in retirement and, and we'd like to have her do the artwork and they said well we get final say <laughs> <laughs> of course they had no idea who this is. and they actually loved it mm -hmm. absolutely loved her artwork and so that's mm -hmm. became the, the cover mm -hmm. the cover yeah yeah, yeah. 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 which yeah she oh. incorporated our shadows into the cover so that is actually us on there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so how did you get the the title did you always have the title all along or is that something that kind of popped in like one of those like two o'clock in the morning when you're <laughs> i think that um you know the title comes from the poem that we have at the beginning of the book which is uh written by may sarton and it's a sonnet part of her autumn sonnets and i um i think that that sonnet which is about grief, but not just about grief, but I think it had um, spoken to me a long time ago and came back during this process. You know, I really mm. feel like it was like, oh, that that's really meaningful and really fits so strongly with what we're feeling. And that's really where it, it, mm -hmm. it, it evolved from that. that it was poem. early in our writing. Mm -hmm. you, you, thought, you read that poem to mm -hmm. me and I went, oh my word, that just really. Yeah. And is... we felt like, it, you know, the uncertain fruit, just it resonated on mm -hmm. and several different levels. So now, now that you were, the, the two of you published your, your first book together, is there, do you have that bug now to like, oh, I got another idea. Now I got another idea. Now you kind of new projects popping up now oh there's always projects <laughs> <laughs> we had ideas before we yeah did this somewhere yeah before. for Actually, sure we had ideas so and, no we're not done yet so I, we have lots of other yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've worked in social work for goodness over 30 years now and um longer if you count in high school i began really doing social work and um there's so many personalities when you're doing, right. you know, you're working with people constantly. So there's so many characters and personalities and situations to draw from mm -hmm. in that realm that um, I have several ideas that we mm -hmm. just, and to help people understand other people differently, yeah. maybe see people differently than they stereotypically might think of a homeless person or mm -hmm. someone who's suffered violence. Sometimes um, we have, our own concept of like I did about a, who was the person who would get an abortion, you know, like I had these mm -hmm. stereotypes and then it ends up very different. And so mm -hmm. those are some of the ideas that I have. Yes. Mm -hmm. She comes up with the greatest children's story concepts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not done yet. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, so if people are interested in reading the book, where's the, where's the best place they could go to find it? 
Um, well, the book is available through rootstockpublishing.com, mm -hmm. but it is actually um, through any platform. Mm -hmm. So, and it is a hot, because it was a hybrid publishing or e-publishing as mm -hmm. well. Um, you can get it through Amazon. You can get it as, you know, as an e-book. Um, you can get it through pretty much anywhere that a, if you go you to wherever you book. get books. Or your Perfect. library. Ask your library to buy it. <laughs> that's there right. You go. That's right. <laughs> Check into your local library. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca and Sally. And this has been a great conversation. And and when you get your new books, come back on. I'd love to talk to you more about it. So. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Barney. This has been lovely. Thanks for having me. Right. Thank you. Do you, so if, if you had, would, I guess the question, oh, this, <laughs> I have an, I have to edit the, the great, I'm going to timestamp this. I'm going to edit sure. this session. Out. Oh, sure. Right, 20, no 20, worries. No, I, I have, I have a, I have an Alexa thing here and it beeps saying snow possible tonight. Yo, thank oh, you. that's oh, great. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Alexa. Thank you, Alexa. <laughs> yes, the sky is blue. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that was going to be a good question too. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, so looking at it, because moving, moving, going. Uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Um,